Hello and welcome to North 100, a Canadian Highlander podcast. My name is Serge. Joining me today, I have a wheeler. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And a Nelly. I'm Canadian and play Highlander. Fantastic. If you want to know more about Nelly, we actually recorded a mini episode introducing him and we brought back some very popular segments. So look forward to that on the LRR MTG YouTube channel. Welcome to part one of our set review for Dominaria United. As always, our set reviews are not exhaustive. We don't talk about all the cards. We only talk about the cards that we think are relevant to the format. So cards that we were analyzing from Canadian Highlander point of view, not necessarily cards that are making a splash and say popper or standard or whatever like that. Today, we're going to be covering white, blue, colorless, and lands. And it's not in Wooburg order, so don't panic. We will cover all the cards and all the colors. We'll get there. We'll get there. And if you think there are cards that we've missed, as always, please let us know in the comments down below. Shall we get right into it, my friends? Okay. Wheeler, start us off. Okay. Uh, anointed Peacekeeper. Two and a white for a 3-3 three, three human cleric with vigilance. Mm. As Anointed Peacekeeper enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Spells your opponent cast with the chosen name cost two more. And activated abilities of sources with the chosen name cost two more to activate unless they're mana abilities. It has ancient two mana. I guess there's a video component to this again. I can do the ancient two mana oh, thing. This is a meme we do. Right. It's like You're going to fit right in. This is great. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. We're just showing the ancient tomb. <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah. It's the Exodus Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, eh, I think this card's bad. Ooh. The more I've been thinking about it, I've been thinking about it a lot. Or rather, bad's not the right word. Um. It's a white three drop that is not as good as the other available white three drops. And the only thing I can say about it that makes me like it a bit more than the other white three drops available for like death and taxes or oh, who am I kidding? Death and taxes. <laughs> yeah, is there a yeah. second deck? Yeah. I mean you could play it in like a green white hate bears, maybe, or like yeah. that Boros hate bears That's that just guy green played. And taxes. Yeah. But <laughs> it's it's just why. Yeah, This is the kind of card that I feel like people would be like, no, it's good in this and this. It's like, why? Yeah, Tell me why. You know, like um, Backstreet Boys in sync. Which Tell one said it? He... It's just, I, I like that it's a human because you could maybe get away with this in like a human tribal deck if you're really looking for that density. It's just, we have Archon of Ameria. We mm -hmm. have Adeline. We have Avon Mind Sensor. There's the PVDR card, which is probably the closest comparison. Elite Spellbinder, yeah. Like, three toughness is good. Vigilance on this body is reasonable, but, like, it doesn't, you know. Hmm. None of these abilities add up to flying, right? You, yeah. you, would you cut? Would you see a world where you cut Elite Spellbinder for this? Uh, no. No. God, no. Yeah. Um, this is also slightly worse in that uh, the way the spell is written the tax ability is static. So if they kill this, the card is discounted as opposed to the PVDR card puts it into exile and they still have to pay that tax afterwards because it's attached to the triggered ability. Yeah, the card's still in their hands so they can use it to discard. Yeah. Um, it's... It's and, not the flexibility, though, that you can choose a card that isn't in their hand, right? You can make their Planeswalkers cost mana, right? True, yeah. You can pre you could play it and preemptively name, like, Time Vault. Yeah. Um. My issue is that, and I know that, I, I understand that I am saying this, mm. Death and Taxes doesn't really struggle with time fall. Sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you gotta believe me on this it's one. It's true. <laughs> We're, That's what hey, made the match so exciting. <laughs> yep, sure was exciting. It was good TV. All Love right. getting reverse swept. All right, well, let's, let's move on then. Yeah, sure. Benalish Sleeper. 3-1 uh, one for 1 and a white, a Phyrexian human soldier with a black kicker, and when Banalish Sleeper enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, each player sacrifices a creature. So, I'm not sure, Wheeler, we've got, you know, a blade with kicker or a hard-to-cast fleshbag marauder here. It doesn't seem like things that white or white-black can already do pretty well. Luris, baby. <laughs> Lur I mean, it's also a human that's always pretty relevant, but... The fact that you can kick cast this off Luris, that's kind of hot. I, I look forward to playing this in some of the most annoying decks possible. Is like, there any other is there any other creature that costs two mana that forces your opponent to sacrifice a creature? I don't not they all, on they tend to cost Gatekeeper three. of Malakir hits them. Right. Like it's the okay. ETB you. Okay. But the Benelish Sleeper, if you have the Luris going, you just select itself. 
yeah. and you get to do it over and over again. There's like a abyssal gatekeeper or whatever, but that hits on what it dies. This is just like the thing that is powerful when you get to repeatedly do it is just already a reasonable ish body and is unique in what it can do, what could, what it can bring to like uh, a deck. Right. You know? Gatekeeper could could come back from your graveyard, but Banalish Sleeper allows you to set up this sort of abyss like lock on your opponent where yeah, turn they because have it, in that case the, the 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 keeper not dying is yeah. ironically the downside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Next up, Danatha, Banalia's Hope is a five mana four four legendary human knight for four and a white. Has first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. And when they enters the battlefield, you may put an aura or equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached with Danatha. So, for starters, five mana is a lot in our format. Five mana is a lot in the format, right? That being said, there are a lot of overcosted auras and equipments. The keyword there being attached. That lets you do it. And I know there were some standard decks and legacy decks for a bit that have tried to do... There's a, a red creature that does something similar, right? It's like a... There's a couple. Yeah. Yeah, where you you find a way to discard something into your graveyard that's overcosted, and then you get to, like, one-shot with them. Storm's Herald? Is that what Storm's Herald does, or is that... Like uh, a... Storm's Herald does it for auras. There's Volshog yeah. Battlemaster. Yeah. Which does it, but... Yeah, Hammer Time is pretty... I mean, this is... A five mana creature. Yeah, but. so the that's that's where I'm coming from. This it's it's a cool effect. It's really powerful. We've seen similar things. It offers a little bit more flexibility in that this is aura and equipment as opposed to just one or the other. But I don't I don't like it. You're you're waving your finger. Look at that mana cost though. Yeah, that's the problem, that's right? So like, much. You're no. trying you're trying to save mana by casting a five drop, right? No, no, no. no. How many pips do you see? Over oh, there? you like it for four and one, white. One one white pip is where yeah, we're that's, going here. That's where you're coming out of this. I, I I think of the decks that like to play aura and enchantment decks or aura and enchantment creatures, right? Like, mm -hmm. and they're cheap. Like the whole point of auras and equipment is to make bad creatures better. Yeah. Is to make it so that your opponent's removal kills a creature that's easily replaceable, and the real threat is represented by the gear that's up there, mm -hmm. and. Five mana, like if you have five mana, you can just cast most of the really good aura and equipment you have. And the degenerate, really expensive stuff doesn't work as well in Canadian Highlander because it's 100 card singleton. Your discard isn't reliable. You, like your package just isn't con as consistent. We don't have four of this, four of the discard, and four yeah. of the payload that you want to hit them with, right? So I, I see this as a liability. It's cool, and maybe there's enough redundancy in the format. And yes, this is a more easily castable one. I just don't, I don't like it. That's fair. It's it's just a big donkey, but like <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of keywords. This is a better version of those other effects in that it's got a great body too. But yeah, yeah, first strike vigilance lifelink is unbeatable if you're green. Yes, that's my big yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Is that like if you're in a deck that theoretically has equipment that will, or sorry, that has equipment that theoretically have like protection from blue and red or yeah. from you know black and green or whatever, is that you slap slapping any of these onto this card is the guaranteed like you're not killing this. Um, but it's also just so, f it's, it's just so big. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is, I don't know. I look at this and go like, oh, cool. They put the abyss in mono white. Neat. <laughs> it's going to kill a creature every turn. that in the last Well, let's, yeah. let's theory craft for half a second here. Sure. What deck does this go into? Like a red, white equipment. I Like you're playing this with equipment, maybe not auras, right? Because I don't think you're trying to get... What's that stupid Eldrazi conscription? Eldrazi <laughs> conscription. Like, what deck is actually trying to play Eldrazi conscription? Right? Yeah. Like green white auras. I don't. I wouldn't play this. Anymore. I'm ignoring the aura line entirely. Oh, it's just equipment, card. right? Yeah. I just see it as equipment and a huge amount of colorless mana, which equip like a deck yeah. with equipment can already they got add. And, tombs. They've got all yeah. that city as traitor stuff. Yeah, know? maybe like a blue white deck that's willing to tinker for Calder complete. Robin Sorensen had this blue white mid range deck that was running a whole bunch of equipment and had like Urza. It was kind of like mid rangey battle bots y cool. and it was just yeah, yeah really you annoying. Got you got Academy and Tinker and I mean yeah that would work on this one. Yeah. And I think correct me if you're mistaken, I think you're still not trying to play any of like the bad equipment. You're probably just playing the best equipment and playing this as a body and maybe you can use it to like 
buy back something that died or cheat a couple of mana like the most i'd go is maybe cauldra complete just because that's like a you know it's like a batter skullish thing i'm not looking to like argentum armor that's what i mean or whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah. the thing yeah. is like you get a bit more value out of going for argentum armor because like, if you just want to get the the equipment attached right away on cauldra complete it's like the body is not even that much different than what you already get with cauldra complete right well, now it would be a nine-nine first strike vigilance it's indestructible. Bigger. It's bigger, yeah, it's bigger, yeah, yeah. It's yeah but bigger. I get, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You lose that value from yeah. the thing. I want to point out that yes, you could go for a Kamigawa creature equipment that prevents you from losing the game mm. on a buried alive yeah. next to this, and then reanimate this. But if you're going to bother to buried alive and then reanimate, you probably just want to make your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that is where my head goes if you wanted to theory craft for a second. I think this card's basically bad, but the one place I could see it happening is if you're already in like Mardu or Four Color or some or like Naya, some kind of like uh two for ones grindy, like powerful spells deck, powerful grid just sort of good stuff, and you have equipment, maybe it gets in. It's like you guys have never died to Bane Slayer Angel. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. All right, so you like it, Nelly and I don't. Ish. It's five Ooh. mana. You don't. You're not like rushing to sleeve this up, are you? I mean, in an ancient tomb deck, in a deck where my point spread is like Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Gite. Okay. Like medium white. Is that Death Texas or yeah, medium thick white? Medium white. Yeah. Medium white. Robin's. Uh, good old big white is back on the menu. Eh. All right. All right. Catch me at a Friday night paper fight. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move Sounds on. Good. Let's move on. Wheeler. <laughs> Defiler of Faith. Three white, white for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian human with vigilance. Uh, as an additional cost to cast white permanent spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost white mana less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of white mana uh, you pay. Heads up on all the defilers moving forward. That's going to be on them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we can color. shorten that for sure. Yeah, yeah it's got the uh, defiler ability. Yeah, <laughs> and it says whenever you cast a white permanent spell, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. I've been experimenting a lot with really annoying white decks. <laughs> <laughs> like, Surge has fell victim to this deck. Oh, it was miserable. And it's oh, only gotten God. better. Oh, it's just, really? It's like a what, mono white, like murder proc, all these monarch cards, all these initiative cards. And you don't, you your opponent just can't win. You can The only right. way, the only way to leave the table is to concede. It's like it a can't boa kill you, and you can't kill it. Well, here's the thing: is it can now kill you? Can you, it? With the like, uh, you got a whole bunch of cards uh, from the past year or so that just provide this extra. Like, no, you're dead. Like, season dungeoneer, white plume adventurer. These are all cards from the um, uh, C. Baldur's Gate, or... Yeah, Baldur's Gate, um, and. Now that I know that the deck can kill, I want to see if it can not kill a little harder, you know? Like, because before it was like the, I can't actually kill you, but I'm kind of trying into, oh, I can actually kill you. I want to go the other way. <laughs> I want to really gum up the board. You I want wanna, the You want to play a Monday night and come out with an 0, 0, 0 4 record, uh, right? I want yeah, I, I a James Bond list, baby, 007. <laughs> Okay, so you want to play this mm -hmm. in a dirtly mono white, maybe white splash, a little bit of black soul sister life game deck. Let me be clear: if it has a home, okay. not necessarily I want to play this. Sure, I will, but but if it has a home, it will be in that deck. Um, there are some action, some infinites that you can create with this. That if you just throw in like a soul warden, yeah, another soul warden, and then. Um, like any of the cards that would bounce creatures or return creatures to yeah, your so hand. Yeah, so you recast it for yeah, life, but you gain life after coming back in. Or Skyfisher, yeah. all that jazz. I'm um, medium on this, maybe in a prison list, because anything that could give you repeated tokens that you could sack to smokestacks yeah. or something like that, I like it's a little bit harder because it's specifically off of white Yeah, permanent spells, which restricts it, but like... 5-5 five, five Vigilance, too. Yeah. That's the abyss. Yeah. But also, if you're playing if you're playing a lot of those, like uh, Cataclysm or Wildfire decks, or a red-white Cataclysm Wildfire deck together, um, you do really try and ramp out and accelerate stuff. And, like, mm -hmm. casting this off of Ancient Tomb or, like a, like, a Mana Crypt or something like that, and then being able to cast subsequent Planeswalkers heavily discounted to get further ahead... 
because like this on turn three planeswalker get in <laughs> or something like that right yeah. like well keep in mind it can't shrink the cost of get in but it can shrink it's the only, cost of the planeswalker yeah only permanent spells just permanent right, spells. right, right, right yeah but, but yeah. i meant it more for the planeswalkers and yeah. stuff sure, like that sure. right like or your other big dumb idiots anything that has a booty larger than four so it lives through your wildfires right i just felt it bare repeating mm. because right away you see defiler you hear phyrexian and your brain uh, if you're like me like, your I brain discount everything yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. what crazy storm turn am i gonna have right and uh i think that defiler of faith certainly could have a home in a deck with boros signet <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you're playing Borrow Signet, <laughs> yeah. probably yeah. Defiler Fate's right. gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Guardian of New Banalia. Mm. Uh I got another two drop in white. It's one generic and white for a two two uh human soldier creature with enlist. Uh, that's a new ability we haven't talked about yet, but if you haven't played any Dominaria, look at the spoilers. You get to tap another not summoning sick creature when this attacks to add its power to this uh, creature's power. Plus, whenever uh, this enlists a creature, you scry two. Oh, I like that. And you can discard a card to give this indestructible and tap it. Oh, it's another line of uh, the. It's like a uh, season. Yeah, Vanguard. Seasoned, yeah. Uh, season Hallblade, a of Vanguard. Yeah. yeah. Team. Annoying, annoying two drops on white. But this one scries. <laughs> I like oh. that. <laughs> I don't know. That's not as good as paying for life, but you still played the the other one, the the veteran. What's it called? The one where you discard it and attack to make it seasoned hollow blade. Seasoned hollow blade. Yeah, exactly. I say you. I don't play cards like this <laughs> in Highlander. <laughs> I don't play cards like this in Highlander. Okay, fair enough. Right. Gladiator. Oh yeah, brother. <laughs> sure. Sign me up. Sure. sure. But he, yeah, I I'll play it in standard. Yeah, I think yeah. it's yeah. Too weak. I think if you are playing a Danto Vanguard, you could play this card. Yeah. Yeah. Soldier Tribal. This is definitely more of a white weenie aggressive style card than like a DNT card. So yeah. for sure. Yeah. Enlist is kind of neat with its ability to like if you have two two twos and your opponent has anything that has three toughness, you're like, oh no, what do I do? Because you yeah. might think, why don't I simply just attack with both? But the ability to actually pump the power and turn your non-relevant creatures into a relevant creature does make this maybe slightly more interesting and flexible. But yeah, it, it's pretty it's pretty niche. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any cards that like haven't already been unlocked from Eventide, but this is another way to like tap creatures without <laughs> untapping them, and then they can use their untap abilities. Nice. Finally, Pilly Pella. <laughs> oh man, Pilly Pella. I yeah. We've waited so long. It's your uh, time to shine. Yeah, I don't see this card as being super duper relevant for the format. All right, next up, Leyline Binding. This is a six mana enchantment for five and a white, and it has flash, which is kind of cool. Domain. This spell casts one generic less to cast for each basic land type amongst lands that you control. So the cheapest you can get it is uh, single pip, which is kind of cool. And when it enters the battlefield, exile target, target non-land permanent and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. So it's a potentially discounted Oblivion Ring with Flash, which is kind of cool. Um, I like this. You could try this in Enchantress. Enchantress is sort of a low-risk way to play a bunch of different colors. Uh, Enchantress very classically is going to be at least two colors, uh, but can easily go up to five colors. I, I think the most common versions of like the old school, more like combo version are there. But I think even, even like a three mana instant speed O-ring is not bad. The other side of that, it's been a long time since I've had anyone cast an Oblivion Ring on me or one of those effects in the format. Um, typically, if you want to do that sort of effect, you want it stapled to a creature just for more flexibility so you can be more proactive. So you'll see that in like um, like a white creature-based deck or a white blue deck might bounce it or get rid of it and apply the pressure. So not a lot of people casting these effects, but this could be doable in that deck if you just want to keep your enchantment count high, which is why I suggested Enchantress in the first place. I think the flash is super nice, and the cost reduction makes it really comparable to Prismatic Ending, right? That You just have the liability you talked about where it's an enchantment as opposed to a, a spell. No? Well, what do you think? No, I agree. I... I'm not saying you want to cut your Prismatic Ending and put this in, but if you're a blue deck, you know, blue white X like three color deck. Like if I'm like, it's kind of another prismatic ending. If I'm like Jeskai or Bant or Hot Bant Ooh, or hot Bant. or Grassy Jeskai, some of those in that yeah, realm. Yeah. Uh, this is like my hundred and first card. Yeah. Oh, you think it's that's just my barely... that's my feeling. You're like it. I could be playing, you know, one more burn spell. Or I could be playing this. It's the kind of card. And this doesn't kill your opponent. We could. We could. On, we are running a little Sorry. late. I think we could probably skip Sorry. on this sure. one if we don't love it. Sure. Apologies. Apologies. But I think we're all okay. going to end up in the same place, which is like, nah. Okay. 
Phyrexian missionary, one in a white for a 2-3 Phyrexian human cleric, with kicker for one in a black. It's got lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is a hell of a road bump. It's a 2-3 lifelinker that's easy to... I mean, it's a the single white pipped card. It's a human. And then it also just has flex to being a grave digger, which later is kind of nice. You can cast off Luris. Yeah, the yeah. kicker spells of Luris is a real thing. Yeah, I think I think this card's probably okay. It's where do you think it has a home? In the white black, really annoying creature deck. <laughs> I w- like I don't want to call it white black monarch because people immediately start thinking of just the monarch cards, mm. but like. I could see this in a white black like Death and Taxes deck or in the white black like grindy ish monarch kind of deck. Like the flexibility is there. Rebuys a thing later. Blocks Goblin Guide. Blocks Goblin Guide. It's got lifelink. Blocks Rockavan. Easy to cast. Yeah. Good art. Mm. Cleric Tribal. I'm good. All right. Next up. Sarah Paragon, uh, two generic white white for a three four flying angel. Once during each of your turns, you may play a land from your ga- graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. If you do, it gains when this is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, exile it, and you gain two life. So no infinite recursion shenanigans going on with uh, getting your stuff in and out of the graveyard because it's gonna exile whatever it is you were trying to to combo out with, but. Every turn, you get to have, like, a Sun Titan trigger, and it's a flying 3-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. Like, it's, a Sun Titan used to cost six, right? And yeah. I still played it in Canadian Islander sometimes, yeah. and I'm, I'm not even the only one. Yeah. Um, plus, when the stuff dies, you gain life, like, as a bonus for having to put it in exile. This seems like a great card. I don't know. I can mm-hmm. see it getting played in green-white decks. Certainly. Um, these are the white X creature decks. Possibly just blue white control, even. I don't know. Sometimes this, they play recursive stuff. This very noticeably doesn't have the same text as like Exhum, which is it's only if it dies you exile it. If it leaves play in other oh, okay. ways. You can bounce it. Right? Yeah, you can bounce it. You can flicker it. You can do, you can do, there's like other play patterns to get around that clause, which it, is kind of wild. It's as also well. even a trigger. Yeah, it's a trigger. Could, it gets yeah. to the graveyard yeah, yeah, and the trigger yeah. goes in the You stack. could do stuff with so flash. You could still too. do flashing your thing hot. back. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Does it get into a combo deck somehow? I, I like it in blue white. I feel yeah. like you touching on blue white is something that I don't think everybody is going to pick up on. But like, yeah, I get to Vendillion Cleek you every turn. <laughs> and then like, you kill my Cleek and it dies and there's this trigger. But if it's my turn, I can then just recast the Cleek or. Right. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The trigger, <laughs> the trigger's already undone because this isn't linked to the Sarah Paragon attacking or anything. It's yeah. just you can do it once of each of your turns. Yeah, I mean, like those of you that play Time Walks in the format, like you, you know, like Eternal Witness costs three, and yeah, if you have Flash, like yeah. you can even play other cards to give your permanents Flash. Wait, that doesn't work, does it? <laughs> no, because it's not gonna have Flash in the graveyard. But still, the click is a good example where you can just respond to the trigger. Yeah. Wild. You had, me so three, cool. you had me at three. You had me at three, four flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, four yeah, flyer yeah. for four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Next up, temporary lockdown. This is a three man enchantment for one white white. When it enters the battlefield, exile each non land permanent with mana value two or less until the lockdown leaves the battlefield. This is an interesting one. It's kind of a fun panic button in a specific meta game. Like I love this as a blue-white control deck against elves, against goblins, against decks that play Moxon. I don't think you want to play this card if you are a deck that plays Mana Rocks, because you don't want to hit your own stuff. This even inadvertently hits um, a lot of, like eggs, like decks that are trying to play small permanents out. That being said, I don't know a lot of decks that want this particular kind of effect, because it is symmetrical. And there's a lot of really good cards in our format that have low CMCs. But if you are in an environment where you can't wait till turn four or turn three in order to hit a panic button, if you're against a lot of very aggressive decks, I can see I can see bringing this in. And you're not in black and don't have like Toxic Deluge or something like that. 
I'm not too hot on this card though. I think like, it, I think it's kind of exciting for decks that are playing Rathagon. Yeah, yeah. It's three mana. Yeah, it's not always going to do it, but if you find that your deck is like slow and getting run over, hate it. Yeah. Okay. Oko, Teferi. Sure. Narset doesn't answer a lot of the early threats that you're worried about. I, Crucible I, worlds. I only like this in a, again in a very specific meta, like if you're getting run over by creatures, not if you're run, getting run over by like value. Yeah, if this sees play, it's in the Canadian Highlander like year end tournament, and I'm playing eggs and Sutherland's on blue white. Yeah, like that's yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah that yeah. kind this of is, this is a silver bullet. Yeah, this is. Yeah. I don't think if, this it's, is a, if it's like you and a known goblins player, both yeah. in that top eight, you're like, hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, I think that was our last white card. Maybe one more. No, no. Here we go. All right, valiant veteran baby, <laughs> one and a white for a two two core soldier. Other soldiers you control get plus one plus one. Three white white exile valiant veteran from your graveyard. Put a one one counter on each soldier you control. Soldier tribal. I, 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 that's the obvious question. Is that a thing? Yeah. I mean, actually, most of the other soldier lords are like seventeen mana, though. No, well, once you get past Avon Brigadier, you'll <laughs> find that there are quite a few three mana ones that all are kind of broken. Like in the scale of lords, like there's a three mana one that gives first strike. That's not okay. There's one that gives an instructable too. Is yeah, three mana one that uh, gives instructable. There's a knight one that gives oh, instructable. That's the yeah, that's the problem. Is okay. there's like human lords, knight lords, soldier lords, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's like soldier has kind of always felt neglected in that. There are some pretty interesting soldier utility cards too, though. Like I think that tribal and canlander is like you have goblins and elves, and then like right below that there's like merfolk yep. and zombies and humans and whatever. Um, Angels and maybe. yeah. yeah. And then, like, and those are all really good. Vampires. And then just, like, right below those is everything else. Clerics, Most soldiers, every druids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're not bad. They're not even, like, that much worse than the Tier 2 tribal decks. Mm. It's just you need enough cards to justify doing something like this instead of playing the other tribal decks or the other decks that are very similar in that color. So, yeah. like, if I'm playing Soldier Tribal... I need a reason. I need enough cards to put me on that path instead of just playing death and taxes or just you know playing goblins. Um, and more cards like this, the more options you get. And there again, there are some kind of groovy lords and some unique utility. Cool. Yeah. It's two mana. It's a lord. So yeah, mm -hmm. what Wheeler said. Right. If you can get there, it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, that did it for white. That did it for white. Welcome to the blue cards. Okay, we've got. We're starting off with Academy Lore Master for blue, blue, a human wizard that's a two three and says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player may draw an additional card. If they do, spells they cast this current turn cost two more to cast. <sighs> I, I don't know about this card. Your opponent may draw an extra card. It's up to them, and if yeah. they, if they do, then their spells are taxed. So it puts the choice in their hands, and also punishes you for taking advantage of the extra card. So I don't love it immediately, but I'd love to hear situations where it's good. I don't have any. All right. Wheelers. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. Just straight yeah, thumbs yeah. down. Fine with that. I thought about this card for like five hours yeah, across but, multiple I've, formats. I've it seen, about it, for it so yeah. seems like a puzzle, right? Yeah. yeah. Because like old school Owling Mind decks, right? Like there's there's a long standing tradition of cards like this in the format. It's the magic equivalent of that game kids play where they're like, well, I shot you. It's like, well, no, I had a guard up. They're like, well, my bullets actually go through your guard. Where it's like, well, they draw a card, but then they can't cast anything. Well, then I cast it on your upkeep. Well, then I'm a blue deck with mana open, and I'm fine doing that. And then I'll draw the card because I'm obviously not doing anything for the rest of my turn. Well, then I'm going to draw on my turn. The, and it's just like, eh. the only thing that I thought might be a home for this is the clues in the name Academy. I think if you're a blue deck and you've got enough mana that you don't care, but I, I don't think there's any cards in Academy you'd cut to put this in, right? No, that's totally fair, but I like where you're going with that. I think maybe that's the hint about where we will see this play in other formats. If but, you're in a deck that has like a ton of mana and it's yeah. also a two mana two three, so it like blocks. But you could just like play cards that one sided give you land like Chorus of Portal, right? If you got yeah. the mana to not care, just play an yeah. expensive. I, I'm not playing this again. Any, Staff of Nin. God, you remember Staff of Nin? Yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah, oh, I'd rather yeah. play that yeah. over this, you know? Yeah. 
Anytime you see a symmetrical card and you're like, wow, that's pretty good, but it does help them. You got to remember, <laughs> we have access to everything. So why play this good card, this potentially good card that could help them when you could just play a good card that only works <laughs> yeah, for yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got the Aether Channeler. This is a three mana two one human wizard for two and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, choose one of three modes. Okay. Uh, you can create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token. You can return another target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. It doesn't and, even say your opponent controls. I know. <laughs> and you can draw a card with it. So there's been sort of a cycle of of cards like this. In white, they had Charming Prince. In black, we just had a Callous Blood Callous, Mage. Yeah. Callous Blood Mage. This card is so good. This card is so good for so many reasons. It's a human wizard. It's a single blue pip. Um, I'm pretty sure this goes infinite in... Alluren. In Alluren, yeah. because it because of the ability to bounce itself or another permanent you have, you can do that over and over. And also in Alluren, because it lets you draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one bird token, I think it's potentially also a win con in that deck with it. It's great in any of the blink decks. It's great in anything that can splash for it. This is a very good card. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I just nailed it on Correct. the, I would, I would, the only, Yeah, the only thing I was going to say was it can't bounce itself. It can't bounce itself. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm just right, saving right. you yeah. from the comments. But yeah, yeah it's still done. But in alert, you often have another a bounce thing. You're bouncing oh, stuff no, back I and forth. Oh, no, I need my yeah. dream stalker. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. card just, like, kicks so many cards out of Bant Blink. Like, if you're you're building Bant <laughs> Blink and you're like, okay, I got to do the, I got to, like, shave the excess, right, from my 300-card pile. It's like, well, this one, like, sinks right to the front or whatever ahead yeah. of, like, the other Mana Wars and the other Elvish Visionaries, right? You know, I was going to ephemerate my spell seeker my <laughs> eternal witness i might just do it on this instead yeah, right yeah. <laughs> all right what do we got next combat research benny boy's got the curiosity yeah uh, one mana enchantment in blue uh it's an aura enchant creature enchanted creature has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player draw a card and as long as enchanted creature is legendary gets plus one plus one has ward one uh i would have played this without that second line of text well, no, sorry. Third line of text. <laughs> <laughs> and it should have the... I, I just care that it's a one-mana aura that makes my flying men draw cards. Yeah, yeah yep. you've got a bunch of legendary flying men in that deck probably by now, too, though. More than you'd yeah, think. more yeah. than you'd think, right? Yeah. This is the fourth? Third. Uh, third, fourth. third. Well, Curious the third, Obsession, Curiosity, yeah. Combat Research... That's, That's I mean, it. there's like keen three. sense, stagger, yeah, right, six right, sense, right, 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 whatever. Right. But like yeah. the mono blue one drop ones. Yeah. Uh, you could play the octopus, I guess, but that's two. But yeah, that, this is it's just redundancy on a card that I'll take millions of. I have to add one thing. I've noticed in some of the Highlander comments, we've been referring to this effect as an Ophidian. and oh, some okay. and I think this is just showing our weird like boomer terminology. Uh, James, can you bring up Ophidian, please? So Fidian is an old three mana magic card from Mirage, Weatherlight. Is, Weatherlight. 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 Yeah, it's a one three mm -hmm. <laughs> for two and a blue. Yep. Zero draw a card. Fidian deals no combat damage this turn. Uses ability only if it's attacking <laughs> and unblocked, and only once each turn. So this was sort of like the original effect of a creature that when it deals combat damage draws a card. Obviously, they've gotten better since then. But if you start if you start describing as deals combat damage draw a card as an Ophidian effect, this is sort of what you're what you're referencing. Worth noting, this card has gotten better in more recent days. But there was a period after this card was printed where like there just weren't any more effects like this <laughs> yeah. for like five years <laughs> yeah. because this card was like immediately a slam dunk and helped like establish blue white control as yep. like a deck. Yeah. This card legitimately saw tournament play up yeah. until like two thousand and three. Yeah, yeah blue yeah. red like, decks was... with lightning bolts. You'd use disc to oh, yeah. like protect it. This was yeah. definitely in the first version of Sorensen Tempo. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the second and third yeah. until they start like, But you're not dealing really with good. any damage. You're like, you don't care about the damage. You just yeah. want to draw the card. So anyways, just a brief history there with Ophidian. We can move on. Yeah. <laughs> Nelly. I want to oh. tell you about <laughs> Defiler of Dreams. It's another Defiler. So it's going to have the Defiler ability for blue permanent spells. But it's three generic blue, blue. So five mana again for a four, three flying. And then the bonus is whenever you cast a blue permanent spell, ooh, it's those three words we like quite a bit. Draw a card. The creature type is Phyrexian Sphinx. <laughs> All right. Soon type. So if yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So I don't know if Sphinx Tribal is your thing. Probably this is going to get in because those are big, expensive permanent spells with lots of blue pips. Um, but that's that's the farthest reach you have to do for this card. I think we could see this in like yeah, the blue based, um, you know, big mana 
kind of combo centric decks like could you see this in something just trying to cast omniscience i feel uh, i don't i don't see a lot of decks playing this i, I mean ever since blue sure. decks have moved away from consecrated sphinx as like these big finishers three toughness it, it's it's power and toughness <laughs> are quite toughness. low there are better effects that just want to draw you cards it doesn't have any of the self-protection which a lot of like the control finishers want to have I don't know. I'm I, thinking about it more as a mana rock. I'm trying to think yeah. about all of them as like these weird stepping stones to big, powerful effects or big, powerful turns. What if I recontextualize this for you? James, please bring up Shrieking Drake. I don't know. I don't even like, know what this card is. Uh, it's, a one mana, <laughs> it's a one mana, it's a one mana, one, one uh, with flying from vision, visions. It's blue. Mm -hmm. And it says when Shrieking Drake comes into play, return a creature to your hand. Right. Oh, you want a combo with this? Yeah, we're going to pay uh, some life and draw some cards. Shrinking. I don't want a combo with this. It dies to bolt, but I'm, I'm just saying that <laughs> yeah. some people, this this has been a bit of a, a talking point right. uh, for other formats. And like, honestly, the big man of blue decks uh, and like some commander decks, there's a lot of similar DNA. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Grim Monolith lets you do whatever you want, no matter the format. So, yeah, I don't know. You're saying maybe there's some weird D-Gen combo potential in it? Yeah, you could just draw your deck. I just think, yeah, like the, where I'm at with this Phyrexian Sphinx is like I'm not entirely sure what I would want to sleeve it up in. But if your opponent untaps with it, like, you know, maybe get ready to, to pick up. But, but I'm not that yeah. worried, though, because like the worst thing about a blue deck untapping with mana is they have like counter spells to protect it. They're not drawing off of that. Like if this said there's other effects that say whenever they cast a spell, draw a card, which I think is way more terrifying. I don't think specifically when you cast a blue permanent draw card. Well, what don't, is the, don't what think is, of them as a blue deck. Think of them as a hard combo deck. Why aren't they just playing? What's that? There's like a three mana. It's like white and a just guy for play a spell, draw a card. Oh, uh, the whirlwind of thought. Yeah, right. Like, well, that's that's a three color card. Sure, but I, I mean, again, if it's a if it's a draw your deck sort of thing, like yeah, I don't know. Sure. No, I'm. Oh, that also says non creature. It's not any spell. It's okay though. Yeah. I'm, I'm not actually arguing that this card needs to get yeah, in. Yeah, no, no, no that doesn't right. slot yeah. perfectly into any deck that I play. Okay, know, or know of. Yeah, Roast I, me in the comments. Show me how I'm wrong, please. I, I would love. I'd love that. I wouldn't touch that card with a <laughs> yeah. twenty foot pole. I'm prepared to lose to it though. Like if my if someone oh, plays yeah. it, I'm People like looking for it. Absolutely, kill me with yeah. it. All right, <laughs> what's next? We got Emperor Mihail the Second. This is a three mana three three legendary Merfolk noble for one a blue and a blue. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast Merfolk spells from the top of your library at any time. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> that part's wrong. Uh, whenever you cast a merfolk spell, you may pay one. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one blue merfolk creature token. Uh, this obviously goes in the merfolk deck, which is getting increasingly better. It's been positioning itself pretty for a while now uh, to threaten the top tier tribal decks, which have historically been goblins and elves. This is getting up there too. Uh, you would play this in the merfolk deck and probably not in not any other decks. Deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Merfolk yeah. took down a an, an online Canlander tournament l earlier this year Sweet. with like some pretty cutthroat competition. So my only question is, mm -hmm. mono blue or are they splashing white or green? Uh, I think it's blue green. It is blue green. Yeah. Okay, the white ones just aren't quite good enough. I'm really tempted to actually sleeve up Merfolk soon. Like it's Ooh. been, yeah, it's getting close, and I'll just have to. I have all the other cards. I just have to buy all the Merfolk. Serge, wait till we get to V, <laughs> right? <laughs> In the alphabet. All right, what's what's up next? Haughty Jin. They sure are. Yep. <laughs> One blue blue for a star four Jin with flying. Haughty Jin's power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. This is part Enigma Drake, part Baral or Goblin Electromancer, uh, all boob window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The classic reverse <laughs> boob window. Oh, you love it. You yeah. love to see it. All right. Uh, Is it still under boob if you can see the nipple? Like, we're not sure, right? Asking the hard questions mm -hmm. here on North 100. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I like this card. I'll play it in Blue Moon. How many Rune Chanters pikes are people sleeving up these days, though? Ooh, that's going to be a zero to a bigger zero. <laughs> yeah, that that's my one worry about this in particular. It's just like... That and Nick... But like... The problem with Enigma Drake kind of cards is that yeah. when they're not doing something, they suck. Like they're just <laughs> yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. right? If it's like, oh, I paid three mana for a two four flyer, yeah. cool. But this is just like, even if you're not attacking with this yet, 
you'll get to attack because you get to cast all your spells for so much cheaper. And your man is just you a can't lot. make bolt any cheaper. There's other spells. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they spells. cost right. more than one mana. Right. That's that's fair. That's Somebody fair. get this man an impulse. Yeah. What? Um, Hold on. I yeah. need ten cc's of uh, incinerate yeah. stat. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to play this in Sorensen. Like even decks with like a heavy-ish delve component. Huh. I'm, I'm pretty into it. What about Flying Man? Didn't did you have a version of Flying Man that was rocking Tempest Gin? Three mana. What Three am mana I rock Flying Man? Yeah. No, no but I thought you did. I thought you economy? had a flying mid range deck at I one did. point. Yeah. It, yeah, it's yeah. not the right. normal path, but yeah, there are there. Yeah, mono blue mid range or the right. like mono blue devotion decks with yeah. I'm surprised I'd play this. by this in Sorensen. Obviously, it's a shoe in like blue red drake mm -hmm. or whatever you'd call that deck like blue red spells right yeah. like that's pretty straightforward yeah um, it, it just for toughness flying yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets bigger oh, it yeah. makes things cheaper it easy to cast like there are a lot of little things no they're just all on a single no card mana, yeah. it's just like whoa not okay. requiring red means it's going to have some more interesting homes too yeah. other yeah. than just is it blitz yeah. yeah all right next up Micromancer. Ah, uh, it's a hill giant. We've got three generic and a blue for a 3-3 three, three human wizard, but it's got a pretty cool ETB. When Micromancer enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an instant or sorcery card with mana value one, reveal it, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. So it's Spellseeker, kind of. You can't get everything that Spellseeker gets, but you can get some of the things that Spellseeker gets for one more mana and a bigger I'm, body. I really wanted to hear your thoughts on this. You, we have Spellseeker at home. You're frowning. You're frowning. Home. Yeah. Don't cut your spell seekers. <laughs> well, it doesn't find time walk. Yeah, but it does find ancestral and ephemerate and lightning bolt. Yeah, but it's four mana. Mm -hmm. It is a three three. That's not that like that's a that's big body. Not nothing. Yeah, I just think now if I'm playing a Jeskai deck, yeah. like Jeskai win the tournament dot deck, I'm not playing this card. And if I'm playing like. The spell seeker combo decks, it's not finding time walk, so I'm not playing it. It's only finding demonic consultation, so I'm not really keen on playing this in like Thoracal. Um Oh, you're going through all the combo decks and see. I'm just it. trying to yeah. I, like, what about the is... if you're playing Bant value blink, you can maybe go for another copy of Ephemerate, where like your entire deck revolves around Ephemerate. Yeah. Yeah, that I don't hate. In a world where I have mana dorks and a hankering for ephemerate uh, ephemerate. Yeah. I don't mind this in Reanimator either because it gets Entomb, it gets Reanimate. Yeah, it's just so expensive. Yeah. All yeah. right, so it's not Spellseeker. We all, we're all in agreement that it's not Spellseeker. It finds good cards, but it's balanced by the fact that it's very expensive. I feel like this is going to have a few places where it's playable. Like, it's not going to be a regular card that you're seeing across the table, but like, there's going to be a, a couple decks where it's correct to play this. What do you think? I Still no? I don't know. I think this card is like a slightly better version of the blue monarch creature. Mm. You have to like, be more specific on that. There's one. like a four mana three three ETB. You become the monarch or something in blue. It's a pirate. I don't know its name. It's not really worth finding. Um, <laughs> this is like from Commander Legends one or something. Yeah, right? OG yeah. Admiral something or other. Right, but right, right. Uh, yeah, it's just like if this is just come into play. Find the recall, cast recall, and that's what I'm looking to do. But it has the flexibility of finding bolt, admittedly. Like, this is fine, I guess. <laughs> I'm just not excited to play a four draw Wait, sure. like this. Yeah, no. Somewhere the poison players are like, one more tutor for us. <laughs> oh, four yeah. The four. infect players are like, yeah. Yes. Mess yeah. me up. Mutagenic growth. <laughs> we just got a Johnny to give us four poison counters eventually, <laughs> yes. right? <laughs> All right. Next up. Rona's Vortex, one mana, instant for single blue, also has kicker for two and a black, return target creature or planeswalker you don't control to its owner's hand. If the spell was kicked, put that permanent on the bottom of its owner's library instead. Now, there's a long-running tradition of adding the words or planeswalker to cards that you would already want to play that just sort of sets it over the edge. This is great. I, I like this quite a lot. I mean... Does it say opponent, target creature, planeswalker? You don't you control. Don't, you don't That's, control. It is. That is a downside. Of course. Yeah. That is a significant downside. One of the big flexibilities of unsummon is to save your own very cheap threats to dodge your opponent's removal. This doesn't have that. The line or planeswalker is good. Uh, as as Wheeler had noticed earlier, there are a bunch of planeswalkers that come down way too early. And a wait. I mean, sure, your opponent would be able to replay them. But if you could just disrupt that tempo 
bouncing an Oko back to hand, and you've got counter magic up or just a creature on the board to deal with it when it comes back down. It does work. Only hitting your opponent's stuff does make it uh, not as good, though. So maybe don't evaluate this too high. That That is, that line of text is getting less relevant, I've found. The or Planeswalker? Yeah, it's too, things are too efficient. It's re- It sounds like a huge big brain play, and occasionally you will still be like, you idiot, bounce my brazen borrower to now get the petty theft, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I'm the world's smartest magic player. <laughs> but... That doesn't act, you're instead just like, well, unsummon your thing. Now I'm up tempo. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the loss of flexibility. We'll take that for the sake of getting that stupid Teferi three off the yeah, board yeah, 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 for yeah. one mana. Yeah. Yeah. Or even like, you know, you're, you're going to be black some of the times you're playing this and like just four mana, I don't have to deal with your Oko oh, yeah. anymore like mm. in, in a blue deck or like, you know, it'll be one mana more of the time too. Yeah. That'll be enough of a window. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm i in. That kicker is actually huge. Oh, yeah. Because late Relevant. game drawing yeah. an unsummon feels kind of bad. You're like, well, mm. I top deck this and I guess I get one more turn to draw another card yeah. when they replay their threat and I'm just dead. But, Unless uh, it's a flash threat, then you don't yeah. even get that. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, But no, that uh, bottom of library late game is going to come up more often than you think mm-hmm. cool card cool next up Talarian terror six generic it was yeah. it was supposed to be me oh, but you know you? what go on because i hate this card <laughs> okay good down. you yeah. get the next one sorry i thought you did the no, last it's one fine. okay so six uh colorless and a blue to cast for a five five serpent common um this spell <laughs> costs one generic less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard and ward two so another member of the cryptic serpent gang uh, joins the throng. Um, we just had one of these in Baldur's Gate too. What was it again? Sailor's Bane. Oh, Sailor's Bane. Yeah. So that one costs two blue to cast. Yep. So that's the advantage that Tolarian Terror has, basically, is that it can get, to, along with Cryptic Serpent, yep. you can get this thing down to one mana, just like Gurmag. It's possible. And that's Crypt- about where the advantages end. Well, it's got Ward. Cryptic Serpent's two blue. Cryptic Serpent's two blue. Yeah. Yeah. And Sailor's yeah. Bane's Sailor's two blue. Sailor's Bane two blue. But this one's only one blue. Yeah. Yeah. And Sailor's Bane is a 7-7. Seven, seven. And Cryptic Serpent is a 6-5. And Sailor's Bane counts in your exile as well. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. And but I did remember it adventure. has ward. Oh, yeah. And Creatures with Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> and Sailor's Bane has ward four. Ward four oh my God. Of ward two. Yeah. So I guess Telerian Terror gets to be... <laughs> The second best Cryptic Serpent with Cryptic Serpent at the bottom? If you're just jamming all the Cryptic Serpents in your deck? My my issue with these cards is I think you'd rather just play Delve cards and Delve cards non-bow with these. Yeah, I don't really want to play this card. Like, but... just play Murktide Regent. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just play Murktide. <laughs> Like, you play Murktide, and then if you want more, you can play Sailor's Bane. And if you want more, you need some help. <laughs> well, it's, the mean, thing is, like, it fits into your Hottie Gin decks, right? Like, if you're not, like, say, think of them as blue-red cards rather than blue-black cards, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, if all of your cards in your deck count how many instant sorceries have, and you need a certain number of heavy-hitting slots, maybe it gets in. Yeah, right? but those decks, you typically want to be more proactive in what you're playing and you don't want this until turn 14 no you can't just jam a bunch of seven right? drops even though you have 100 cards it's true yeah that's yeah. that's the one issue and it's there. not as good as the dragon from uh the can't fly from uh from bowler's game yeah if All you're right. gonna play one i'll still play those i think we got two blue cards left we got wheeler and then me okay yeah voldalian hex catcher is mine and you get the merchant okay uh hex catcher of the voldalian variety <laughs> one in a blue for a one one flash merfolk wizard um it says other merfolk you, get, you control get plus one, plus one. Of course, it has flash. Uh, and also sacrifice a merfolk. Counter target non-creature spell unless its controller plays one. Pretty good lord. Pretty good lord. <laughs> Pretty good lord. Really, yeah. really good lord. Why does it have flash? Uh, Makes the counter spell Because it lets it just be a counter spell. Yeah, yeah, wow. This is actually, I mean, I could sit and talk about the design aspect of this card and how like merfolk is a deck just filled with lords and so while this is a super powerful ability removing a creature from your board that is basically going to be a lord you know 99 of the time can make combat mock like it can muck you like sacrificing a merfolk is a much larger cost than sacrificing say a goblin or an elf yeah, or whatever for sure um 
But, you know, the, the, we could save that for later and so just be like, holy crap, it's another two mana merfolk lord with a sick ability. Yeah, and you, it's only one in a blue. If you ignore the bottom ability, it's still such a sick card, right? Yeah. Two mana for a lord with flash. That's, that's still done. good. Yeah. That's still going to kill people. Yeah. yeah. Catch them off guard. All right. And the final card in blue, the Voldalian Mind Singer. This is a three mana, two, two merfolk wizard for one and a blue and a blue. And then it's got Kicker for one and a red and or one and a green. Enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each time it was kicked. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with power less than the Mudslinger's power for as long as you control the Mudslinger. So. Are you singing, saying Mudslinger? I don't know. You said Mudslinger? <laughs> it's Mudslinger mud now. Singer. Okay. I, I looked yeah. at that card enough times and I just, I just, I gave up. Mind, mind Singer. Mind Singer. Mind it's, Singer. It's a riff on Sea Singer from Fallen Empires. Mm -hmm. Is it? I yeah. Didn't, I didn't put up on that. Oh, look at the art. Yeah. That's kind of cute. All right. God, I love Sea Singer. Yeah. Downside. It's expensive. It's expensive and it's slow when, especially when you compare it to the previous card, which was cheap and fast and lord uh but then again it also does a really cool effect which we haven't seen while stapling onto a particular creature which is like the mind control as long as you affect it now there was the what was it the four mana two two soar fairy of temptation yeah. yeah soar of temptation which used to be like a standout in our format we used to play that card all the time it's like true. that was just like a blue staple so um two blue blue for a 2-2 two, two fairy wizard with flying, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creatures for as long as you, it remains on the battlefield. So very similar templating. And this generally fell out of favor. It was like very cheap to remove. It was pretty expensive. Your opponent might not be playing creatures that make it a very relevant target. It didn't have the restriction, though, for the power and toughness. And then so like little format history, maybe you just go for like a mind control or an effect like um, what's one that you get to search to the library for a creature? Bribery. bribery bribery like you just bribery them instead so those have all kind of fallen to the wayside so this is cool and exciting and is part of a hot new tribe the merfolk deck but the effect is increasingly falling out of favor because you don't want to play three mana for a two two that doesn't do anything you might not necessarily want to be in green or red to cast this to grab stuff i just bonked my microphone apologies so i don't know how much this is going to see play Merfolk, right? Yeah, but it, like, even if you are playing Merfolk, there's got to be. Why wouldn't you just jam least, another lord? Right? You have lords to pay that kicker for you, you right? Yeah, the well, the lords will already buff the power and tough the power of this, right? Tough to so that, well, that's yeah, why we're saying yeah. lords, right? Yeah, you know, it it does have better hits because you're playing in a deck with such a density of yeah. lords, anyway. Yeah. So you don't even have to kick it to steal a five power. And you're creature. already playing all of the lords, and <laughs> then you just you need some other stuff. Sure, like even if if this is just coming down and taking like a mana dork. Sure, I'm okay with that. Yeah, or yeah. nothing. You're just playing yeah. it as a threat. Yeah, as, as far as like oh, role players in your deck that aren't the lords or like I don't even know outside of lords with the very best ones, like the two one that draws a card. You know, yeah, or the so one one that, that can sacrifice to counter a spell. Curse from catch. Curse yeah, catch. A lot of stuff that's just tapping their stuff down. Right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those few like that what are the actual words. density of cards there yeah, are. Like the list of cards you're going to end up playing in Merfolk um, that are Merfolks, like that, that do benefit sure. from your lords being there. There's probably a little bit of wiggle room still. I haven't built the deck. I'm curious. Yeah. Like what the actual, what is the density? I mean, you're nodding like you might know Wheeler. Like, I, I built it last week. Oh, cool. Uh, for, uh, Were you got, hungry for three drops? No. Uh, no. No, you. Uh, I I found that I had some flexibility in like actually selecting a sub theme too. Oh wow! Like okay. I went for a bit more of a mana denial kind mm -hmm. of package. Okay. Um, but yeah, this card's a slam dunk in that. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. do think this makes the cut? Oh yeah. In terms 100%. of like okay, past the merfolk that aren't lords or draw you a card or are curse cast. Tell you what, those ones get in, right? Tell you what, yeah. I'm gonna go one step further. Mm. The more I look at this card, the more I think that this card is actually just like potentially mid range really good in mid range oh, yeah really? yeah like, like not a merfolk deck like not a merfolk but, deck but, awesome but love then, to hear it are we bringing sower back too like this doesn't even fly is it a five mana four four it's is that a five mana it yeah. four four or a seven mana six six if you have teamer right yeah but okay. it's a five mana four four mind control a thing yeah is pretty good well, and it's flexible. restrictive mind control. Like, let's let's be real. Let's remember we did play Sower yeah. for a long time, and but some Sower, decks still Sower play gets Sower. Anything, that's right? True. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. 
Like, I'm not taking a Gurmag Angler, but that's okay. That means that I get to use my removal and other spells on their Gurmag Anglers when I can and then instead use this to get rid of more utility creatures. Interesting. Or, you know, sack outlets. Or... Sower's back, baby. All right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm willing to give it a shot. I think Rug is like the sleeper OP deck in the format right now. Hmm. I don't even know if it's that much of a secret because, you know... Ren and six plus Oko. Just like um, good stuff, Rug? Sort of mid or specifically lands or something? Or? Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Minsk and Boo. Oh, God, yeah. Minsk and Boo. He <laughs> just plays some good. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on and we'll go to Wheeler. Okay. Sure. This card was made for me. Aww. <laughs> it's Gerard's Hourglass Pendant. Uh, one mana legendary artifact with flash. It says if a player would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn instead. Wait, why? And then <laughs> why is that on, flash? Hold on, <laughs> hold on. And then it also has pay four tap exile the hourglass. Return all return to the battlefield tapped. All artifact creature enchantment and land cards that were put into uh, your graveyard from the battlefield. No, turn. you don't so, get to second sunrise <laughs> and force of will me so, for one mana. So. <laughs> So just to be clear, I this gets thrown around a lot where people are like, oh, this card was made for me. It's like the grizzly bear that exiles cards at a graveyard. Get out of here. This is an egg that mocks time vault and second sun rises. Yeah, that's messed up, dude. Yeah. Why does it have flash? Because Spellseeker can... Uh, James, get the uh, sensor butt ready. <laughs> we don't have one. Uh, all right, Nelson, just scream really loud. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm playing this in eggs. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a prob- tutorable second sunrise. That's like the floor. Yeah, yeah. I think there's probably going to be some spots for it in other decks too. If you can just, if you're not fully eggs, but you can get something out of the activated ability, being able to stuff your opponent's time walk is just like a very common thing that you might like in yeah. the format. It's pretty good. Like that first yeah. ability is just pretty good. This is like the easily the most playable card we've seen with that ability on. Usually that yeah. ability is on like a five mana artifact. Or Ugin's something, Nexus right? yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, no, it's on, it's on a couple things, right? There's the Nexus and then, was it also just on the Silex in the set too? No, it's no, not okay. on the Silex. Okay, okay. okay. Um, yeah. Maybe the... it's just the Nexus or Gaunties or something? No, never mind. Can I give a can I give one little inside baseball eggs thing oh, about please. this? Yeah. So the one ish that obviously it exiling seems like a big deal and it makes it a little bit more difficult. But there are a couple of eggs loops that use uh Sahili, the three mana Sahili Sublime Artificer, who has a minus two that lets you turn one artifact into oh the copy God. of another artifact or yeah. creature. And so what you can do with those loops is you would usually Sahili to copy a thing and then you can kill Sahili. And so you, you can bring it back with like a face uh with a face reward. Right. So you would kill Sahili and then bring her back because the face reward brings back all permanents. This doesn't bring back Planeswalkers. Sorry, uh, Jaya. Uh, <laughs> but it also just means that there's that that loop or Tezzeret is another big one. You minus four Tezzeret the Seeker and it dies so that you can get it back with a face reward. Um those are two things that are genuinely relevant in setting up a lot of eggs loops. Um, and they don't work with this. Hmm. So if you're an eggs player, think about it. But other than that, yeah, just muck the spell seeker players. Who who cares? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Great card. Next up, Nelly. We've got inscribed tablet. Another Yet egg. Yet another egg. <laughs> I got I got well, I, you know like the taste of eggs too um one generic of course yeah. i know but i miss eggs yeah. <laughs> that parsonage breakfast sandwich I yeah, still yeah, yeah okay uh one generic for an artifact with pay one tap and sacrifice this reveal the top five cards of your library put a land card from among them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order that's not a may you've got to find the land if it's there because you revealed them if you didn't put a card into your hand this way draw a card Ooh. Seems like a really solid egg. Wheeler, what do you think? I defer to you, but Thanks. it seems good. Thanks, Nelson. It's a really solid egg. Uh, it has some downsides, but those all just get erased because it's a one mana one. Yeah. We haven't gotten a new one like this. That is this straightforward. It's going to be awkward once you're set up already and have Academy and there's not really another land you really want, but it still is going to put a card in your hand no matter what. 
Yeah, a and lot you can of discard that card or something, right? It's kind of funny because a lot of the uh, we have a lot of artifact lands already, and getting artifact lands into your hand isn't that bad if you're on yeah. stuff like Artificer's Intuition or just you just can discard them to your Wheel of Fortunes or whatever, and then uh, bring them back with other uh, like Savine's Wreck or um, not from the Sunrises, but Scrap Trawler looping and stuff. Um, it's it's just and you got utility lands, yeah. It's good egg, <laughs> good egg. They obviously like could have they could have given you the full, the full breakfast with like you may put a land from among them if you didn't draw a card, but it still seems great. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up, <laughs> Karn Living Legacy. Four mana, Karn type Planeswalker enters with four loyalty plus one. Create a tapped Power Stone token. A little bit inside baseball when Ellie and I did the judge video judge for the video. PPR. I thought Power Stone tokens were going to be more present in the new set. And so I included it in the video. If you start off reading the FAQ that they send to judges, it's like sometimes things that are only on one card are still just right at the top. Yeah. Like and, alphabetical yeah, order. Yeah. I'm like, wow, Power yeah. Stone tokens are going to be everywhere. It's very important to note that Power Stokens, every card that creates Power Stokens in the set makes them tapped. Therefore, there's a lot of them. No. They're publicly. Uh, Mario stated they're going to be important in Brothers War. So the okay. next right. All right. it's a seed for the next. Great, Great. perfect. Yeah. Uh, so Power Stone Token, if you're not familiar, it's a mana rock that enters play that you can tap. And it's got a double negative in it that's also really frustrating. Uh, this mana can't be spell this mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell, which is super confusing, but it's a double negative, so it can actually be used on a lot of things. A lot of things. Anyways, that's way too much on just the plus one. Minus one. Pay any amount of mana. Look at that many cards from the top of your library, then put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then minus seven, you get an emblem with tap and untapped artifact you control. This emblem deals one damage to any target. So Karn doesn't do the thing that we want Planeswalkers to typically do, which is protect itself. Right. But Karn does... Everything else that you want a Planeswalker to do in a deck that has a lot of artifacts in that it makes more artifacts, which is good for the artifact decks. Uh, those artifacts make more mana, albeit a little bit slowly because they enter play tapped, but that's fine. Um, its minus ability is basically just a demonic tutor if you have infinite mana. It's actually kind of absurd. So if you're one of those decks, it's like, what do I do with all this mana? Uh, Karn lets you find your win con. It lets you find your... Um, What's that X creature that just lets walking you, ballista? Lets you find your walking ballista, basically, which is right there. Uh, and in some weird, bizarro universe, if you somehow get this to seven loyalty and your opponent isn't already dead, it gives you a win con in your artifact deck. So, I just like it for its tutor ability. I don't know if that's more or less exciting than well, Tezzeret puts it directly into play. I gotta say, I've played in academy decks that have like won tournaments. I've I've played cards with this mana cost that are way worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, way worse. I'm very, <laughs> like, I think Academy decks are going to kill people dead with this. I'm right? very proud of us as a trio here. Aww. Okay. Because I think this is one of the... Uh, the internet hates this card. They say it's like one of the worst Planeswalkers of all time. What? If, you, if you're not allowed to put Slayer and Academy in your deck, this card gets a lot worse. Oh, that's yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. They they hate they, this card? That's a very strong statement. Right. Yeah, they yeah, hate Yeah, the it. standard and like, the modern actually, players don't have a use for it. Right? Just, yeah. and, but even people who invest in Commander are like, oh, really? this is just... Which Commander is, players. What? Yeah. Hold, hold, what? Up, hold up a second, Commander players. Yeah. And I will say, it is probably bottom 10 Planeswalkers of all time. Could be. But... Like Nelson. <laughs> and Surge didn't say it, but I'm going to put Surge up to this. Like Surge, I too have played and won with much worse cards <laughs> in this mana value in Academy. And like, it just does everything Academy yeah. wants. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's funny. You read through all the abilities, you're like, eh, that's a little disappointing. Eh, that's, that's okay, I guess. Eh, that's not great. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to sleeve this up next time yeah, I put yeah, it yeah, in yeah, Academy. Yeah, like, yeah. Matt, <laughs> Matt, Matt God, it kills people in Academy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've lost with infinite mana more times yeah, that's, that's than the worst some thing people infinite have mana. ever just gotten infinite yeah. mana. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I guess that's an important point. Like, think of all the people who've never experienced the joy of infinite mana. What's the one thing that 
Oh, like what's the one way Academy decks usually lose? Is they don't have a payload. Stumbling early and getting run over. Oh. Okay, that too. Well, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a more common okay, way. Yeah. But it's, I, it's, it's, it's the classic thing of any ramp deck. You have all ramp, no payload. Sure. Yeah. Right? But this helps you ramp the games. You don't have ramp, and it gives you payload. We don't have payload. Yeah. So yeah. as long as there's no Kasali Pride Mage running around, <laughs> this <laughs> solves, like, the biggest issue of that. And again, like, Grim Monolith is not... It's cheating. <laughs> like, decks that play Grim <laughs> Monolith and, like, Mindstone and whatever, they don't play by the same rules. Getting this card on turn two or three is, like, a very relevant thing that can happen with Honestly, ancient tombs just and stuff. playing it and upticking and making just a ridiculous amount of mana yeah. five loyalty still less than oko but still a <laughs> lot of loyalty yeah still gonna have so much loyalty. it's all messed up yeah. all right uh next up who is it it's Sorry. wheeler karn soup karn <laughs> karn silex good soup yeah oh good soup uh three mana legendary artifact comes into play tapped Players can't pay life to cast spells or to activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. And then X, tap, exile Karn Silex, destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X or less, activate only as a sorcery. Uh, this is kind of funny because it's like the decks that would want to play this card are probably the decks that have, you know, artifacts in play, stuff they might not want to blow up. Uh, or I guess maybe you could get like... This isn't Pernicious Steed, and I don't know if I'm playing Pernicious Steed. And even though you could have the, like, oh, it shuts down fetch lands, it's like, yeah. You're playing fetches too. I like this. Okay. You don't like this? No. Man, as somebody who has played Disc, yeah. the unpronounceable Disc, Neville Rathlangers. Nevenerals. Nevenerals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like this. Is better Disc. Yeah ish. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Disc comes in tap two, right? Yeah, disc comes yeah. in two, and yeah. it's it's more. It's like disc is more unwieldy. I think you like disc sorcery speed. No, it's instant speed. It's just disc is five mana altogether. Yeah. Um, but if you're still playing pernicious deed, like a thing about pernicious deed is that I don't even know if Allison was playing it like three years ago or four years ago or whatever. Like last time I played with Allison, I, I think she might have cut it. She may have cut it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that, so like, many, I think this there were so worse. many problems with Pernicious Deed. I think already. this is worse than Deed. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. Oh, I like this better than Deed. I want to play this so in a prison deck. So you're loving the um, I want the static there, ability. And you, there it is. You put it in right. a prison deck. You shut off their fetch lands because you're like wasting all their unbasics. They can't get anything else with those. You play a planeswalker. You think of it like a wildfire deck, right? You just like you ramp. And then you salt the earth and you have one threat left. The only decks that want to play this are decks that don't ever win, <laughs> just their opponents lose. And like like the Trinus look like that. Yeah. And the, yeah, the Trinisphere deck. You play this off workshop. I don't know, man. I don't And then you wait a couple turns for the rest of the ability to get up there. I don't I know. If I sleeve this, I feel like I am basically telling the universe, ready to go, two and two. <laughs> That's got to be like, this is like one of the most miserable ways you can possibly like win a game of magic is you're just like workshop Karn Silex turn one and your opponent's just like, cool, Arid Mesa, go. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Stares at their monkey reading yeah. it over and over yeah. again. You yeah. know, like, I don't know. Yeah. And then you like you play Mox, and then you cast Trinisphere turn two, and they just like die a little Winter inside. Orb has, Winter Orb has some soul in it, you know. Smoke stacking people out—that has some character to it. This one, I don't know. I mean, you like soup, and you're like, no thanks, I'll just die instead. It's just how do I like? Even if somebody plays this against me on turn one and I'm like a red deck and I'm just looking at a hand of one drops or whatever, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not deterred by this. It's not like a, oh, they might wrath, so I should play around it. It's right. just like, yeah, a Goblin Guide. Oh, well, yeah, like it's all a Pride Mage or Rex Age or whatever. Yeah, like, I'm it just... does have the downside of being proactive or yeah. reactive, rather. I could see, I will say this about this card. I could see, like, a meta in the future at some point where, like, multiple decks have like a bunch of their important pieces or threats shut down by this hate effect like i don't I'm not certain that it could happen it's just because it's two things kind of right it's like they can't pay life to cast spells or activated abilities that aren't that aren't mad about so it affects spells and it affects activated abilities pod so, right like, yeah, yeah so like you know the the list of like powerful things that cost life as well slowly grows so i could see a point i don't think it's right now but i could see a point where like mm. this becomes sort of playable 
All right, next up, Nelly. Timeless Lotus. Hey, it's my it's my first pick of the um, fun draft uh, of Dominaria United. We've got legendary artifact for five generic that enters tapped and just says tap, add a white, a blue, a black, a red, a green, a Wooberg, if you will. Um, and that's it. It's it's a gilded lotus that comes in tapped, and instead of three mana of any one color, you get five, but it has to be one of each. I like it a lot. I play gilded lotus. Um, I'm happy to play the goofy commander mana rocks in Canadian Highlander if I'm playing Academy or like Eldrazi's or something like that or both. Uh, so I think there's a home for this in decks that you know are bad and don't care. <laughs> what about Paradox? Sure. Or or you can put it into good Paradox deck. is that bad. Is it going to make it into Paradox though? I don't know. It's Probably, a five mana artifact maybe. that comes in tapped. That's so much mana. I know. Like it's the thing about Gilded Lotus is you can like play another mana rock that turn. Yeah, over. yeah. Five mana is so much. Like yeah. literally going from five to ten is yeah. kind of not a thing you've ever been able to do. Yeah, unless you played an academy. Yeah. Right, like, you, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, by like, or like, like ten as opposed to going to infinite or something. Like five to infinite, you've kind of seen or whatever. Mm-hmm. But five to ten is a weird one. Yeah, academy just feels like you're cheating, right? Yeah. But like, as far as like fair, ma- fair-ish yeah. magic. No, I mean, I really like it. I'm looking forward to playing it more. But yeah, I, I, I do this thing every now and then where if I really like a card and I feel like it's sort of activated the pet part of my brain, mm-hmm. then I can't keep seeing it as a good card. You know oh, what I mean, yeah, I have like fair. blinders for like. I don't actually want to defend this card to other people because mm. I'm I'm just enjoying <laughs> playing it rather than like reasoning playing. I it. think that's fair. That's You're like a... I like this card a lot. You might not, but it will be mine. Yeah, and I, I can respect that's that. That's a huge part of Canlander. Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't like min maxing your last ten cards. It's like ah, eh, I'm bored. Just I'm play just gonna... the stuff you want. <laughs> Life's yeah, too probably short. Still be fine. Yeah, like you're gonna win more events by you know having fun with Timeless Lotus and playing tight than playing like. No, I'm not playing Timeless Lotus. In fact, Selesnia Signet was the correct mana rock <laughs> yeah, to play. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. it's just like, oh, just, you know, just muck them with some ridiculous mm. stuff. Yeah, enjoy your Timeless Lotus turns, kids. Okay. All right, and finally, the only land we're going to talk about, because the rest of the lands are reprints. not really yeah. worth talking about or reprints. Yeah. yeah, the Plaza of Heroes. Tap, add colorless. Tap. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast legendary spells. Tap. <laughs> Add one mana of any color among legendary permanents that you control. Three and tap. Exile the Plaza of Heroes. Target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That was a lot of words. Yeah. Uh, this is playable. This is surprisingly playable. Uh, there are a lot of legendary creatures this day. Now, it's interesting because historically on the podcast, we say... Legendary is a downside because of the prevalence of Caracas in the format. But we still play a lot of legendary creatures. They print a lot of legendary creatures. And if you are a, like, four-color blood deck, for example, and you're looking to include mana that helps, I mean, it's tough because you can't really accelerate yourself early on with this, but this is a great, like, turn three or turn four land, you know? Super Friends doesn't hate it. Yeah. You're either casting planeswalkers or mana rocks. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. I think consider cutting a planes for it in DNT. Yeah. Because a lot of your creatures just happen to be legendary. Like Thalia is legendary. God, protect Adeline Thalia? is legendary. Yeah. Oh God. Isamaru is legendary if you're if you're playing it. Indestructible in Gitrog you know? is pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> it is exile, so you can't do like funky loops in a land yeah. deck with it. But yeah. I think also like just maybe even in blue white, like uh, like if you're playing or any deck that has like Stoneforge and Vendillion click, you know, this last ability is pretty messed up. Hmm. Yeah, t- we talked about Tyrite Sanctum when Kaldheim came out, right. and it was like, oh yeah, D and T can play this in like maybe a deck that has like a whole bunch of legendary creatures, but that makes you jump through. First, you got to make it a god. Yeah, yeah. If there's <laughs> yeah. a second yeah. step yeah. to it, yeah. yeah. This I actually one, I think that card's not totally. I don't think it's bad. No, no, you know, I it agree. comes untapped. Adapts for right. colors. Yeah, I don't think that's bad. Yeah. But like, that's a You're card that harder, we yeah. looked at positively. That you have to reach 
like deity status sure, 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 before sure, sure. doing the second one. Yeah. So yeah, the, I think this one. D and T used to play Worst Card too. You'll remember it, the name, and I've forgotten. It's a land that target creature gains protection from artifacts. Tower of the Tower Magistrate. Of Magistrate. Tower of the Magistrate. That used to yeah. be like a staple in D and T. Because you could target your own lands to protect them, or you could target your opponent's creature and their equipment would fall off. Yeah, They're yeah. attacking you with like a sword of fire and ice. You'd be like, no, now it's just a tutu, you fool. Nice batter skull. Kill their yeah. Shame, shame of the yeah. germ dies. Yeah. 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 So this was this was kind of this was a very funny Yeah. You know, utility land. So you got room for it. You gotta worry about like I would think Plaza of Heroes is kind of on this level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, that I believe was our last card. And so that is going to do it for today's set review. So as always, thank you so much for watching. A reminder that this podcast is brought to you with your support over the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. If you think we missed any cards, let us know in the comments down below. We love to, we honestly love to go through and see what your thoughts were on the set, on our thoughts on the cards to reflect and stuff like that. There will be more episodes of this. There will be no, more episodes of Nelly. I've been Serge, joined by the wonderful Wheeler and the wonderful Nelson. Thank you oh so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.